Hello. And today, today we are going to be doing a, a little different video. Oh, hello. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, it's kind of about Pokemon, but it's mostly about the types of videos that you see a lot of different people in the community make uh, and how they make them probably. So yeah, today's video is going to be all about if you want to make those kinds of videos, what do you need? Like what kind of equipment? What's the setup kind of look like? Um, you know, that's really what this is going to be about. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Today, we are going to talk about four different common setups, I would say. And keep in mind, all of these are setups for videos that are not just you recording yourself on PTCGO. This involves some camera in the real world, right? Like you get, you're recording some real world stuff. And the four setups that we're gonna talk about today are one, pack openings, two, deck profile videos, three, battling IRL. So like, you know, those, like the stuff that you see at tournaments, right? Uh, and four is a new type of video that really has only existed because of the quarantine. And that is these like virtual IRL battles is the best name I can come up with for it. But it's basically when you can't be physically with somebody to play with the cards, especially when you're talking about new sets coming out and you wanna test that and you can't do that online. Um, how do you record two different play mats and all that stuff? So uh, yeah, the those are the four different types of videos that we're gonna talk about uh, and the setups that you probably need to make those kinds of videos. Let's jump into the first one. The first one we're gonna start with is pack opening videos. Um, I would say that the minimum requirement for pack opening videos are really two or three things, right? Uh, and keep in mind for all of these, uh, I'm assuming that you probably have some access to a computer, whether that's a Mac or a PC. Um, having access to a computer makes all of this possible, basically. You could maybe get away with it without it, but really you need access to some sort of a computer. So just keep that in mind. The minimum requirements though, are going to be, you probably want a, a smartphone camera. I have my iPhone that I use. Um, a smartphone camera is a basic requirement for any sort of pack opening, I think. Um, and what you would do is you would use that smartphone camera and you could just attach it to some sort of an elevated mount. This is what I use for my videos. Um, you just put it in there, you mount it. This, my version clamps onto the side of a desk um, other versions are like, are like this, where you just get a tripod and you mount it to like a phone holder on this and you just set that up and angle it. Um, and then what you do is you just hit record. Uh, you film it. There is no face cam in this version, but you just talk. Um, and then you take that footage, you do any sort of editing that you might want to do. Um, and then, then you export it and put it on YouTube. Now let's get into the, what I'm calling optimal version. Um, there probably is even more optimal versions than this, but for simplicity, let's just call this the optimal. For the optimal version, I still think a smartphone is probably the best camera for um, recording the actual packs and opening of the packs and showing of the cards. If you are not willing to spend crazy amounts of money for a second DSLR camera as your pack opening camera. If you have two awesome DSLRs, yeah, that's your pack opening camera. But the reason I think a smartphone is better than something like a GoPro is because a smartphone has a, um, I believe it's a variable focal length, meaning you can focus on something close, you can focus on something far away. So uh, that variable focal length makes it so that you can show the packs when you're opening them and then bring a card up close. GoPros do not have that variable focal length. I have a GoPro. It didn't work, and so I switched over to an iPhone. Um, I still think some sort of an elevated foam mount like this, an angled mount is better than an overhead for pack openings, but to a certain degree, that kind of comes down to personal preference. Um, you would need a PC or a Mac, uh, specifically for this especially, uh, because what you want to do for the optimal one is also get some sort of a face cam, right? A reaction to you live opening these packs up. Uh, so yeah. You have a PC and then you have some sort of a webcam or in a perfect world, a DSLR. Uh, and if you have a DSLR, then you need a way to get that footage into your computer. And that's where something like Elgato's Camlink comes into play. Um, a Camlink 
lets you transport that footage from your camera into your computer. It's a capture card, basically. Um, and then you would have something like an external mic, so you're not relying on the mic on your camera or the mic in your smartphone. Um, that can be either the type of mic that I have here, which is a uh, an XLR. You would need more equipment. Uh, you don't need an XLR. I would say if you're just getting started, get something kind of like this. This is a Blue Yeti. It's a USB mic. That's the difference. You don't need special equipment. You just plug this into the computer directly. Um, there's other USB mics that might be better than that now uh, than when I bought this several years ago. So a USB mic is a good place to start. Um, and then, yeah, you would need to then record um, your phone locally. I would record the phone locally because getting your phone into your computer is tough live. Um, and then you would record, you would record your uh, camera via a uh, software like OBS. Um, I'll try to have the links for a lot of this stuff down there. But uh, yeah, you could use OBS to record you talking into the camera. You record the phone separately and then you edit those together in a program like Premiere or Final Cut, depending on uh, the software you prefer and the computer you have. Uh, yeah, and you would just sync that sound up. And then in a super perfect world, you have music that you can use. Uh, like I use Epidemic Sound for some stuff, um, but put that underneath everything. And there you go, you got a really sweet looking video. Um, so yeah, phone, mount, fancy camera. Uh, way to mount that camera onto your desk is another thing. Um, mic like this or like that uh and obs all that stuff so it's a lot to go on here but that's probably the optimal setup um and i'll probably have footage of like that setup actually in my environment so you can see that now so for pack openings again i use this play mat or i use a play mat but uh the main difference is my face cam is a little lower and it's angled down to look at me my microphone obviously is lower. I usually sit, I have the chair pulled up, but that's whatever. Uh, but this is the main difference here. I use sort of an angled mount like this. This one just clips onto the desk, but if you have a larger desk, you could use a tripod even and put the tripod in front of you. I know that's what a lot of people do. And I use, and I'm using my phone right now, which is why I can't show you that, but I actually put my phone in here and record my phone uh, for the pack opening. Uh, because, like I said earlier, the um, the focus of a phone, like it can focus up super close and it can focus up far away. GoPros don't really have that ability. Um, and obviously like, you know, my DSLR, if I wanna use that for my face cam, it's just complicated. If you have two DSLRs, I guess you could use that instead, but a phone is actually very good. And usually what I'll do is I'll record uh, that. I record that via OBS. And then I will record this locally. And then I will sync the two files and the audio and everything in Premiere after the fact. And the reason I do that is because a phone, a phone does not really work in OBS. There is one app, but the app downgrades, the, like, you know, compresses the footage very badly. So I would recommend just recording your phone footage um, separately, figuring out how to get the phone footage onto whatever computer it is that you're editing and then you can edit the footage together and then it'll work just as well. Now, that's the super fancy. You don't even need a face cam for some pack openings. That's like a bit much. But um, if I were to do pack openings, really the only thing you need is some sort of an angled phone thing. It could be a tripod, it could be something like this. And you just use your phone. Really, that's like the bare minimum of what you need for this. And there is a cat on my balcony. The next video uh, type that we're gonna cover is going to be the deck profiles video. Now deck profiles are when you see people like showing cards, physical cards and saying like, this is the deck that I built and yada yada. Um, I would say again, the minimum setup is the same. A smartphone, a mount, um, and then some way of editing that footage after the fact if you want. Um, super basic, right? You can record you putting cards onto a table uh, just like that, just like you do with pack openings. The optimal setup, however, is a little bit different than the pack openings. For an optimal setup, I would say you can still use your smartphone or you can use uh, something like a GoPro 
uh, as your uh, camera for the cards. Um, I say GoPro now because usually everything is going to be the same distance away because it's sitting on a mat or, or a table or something. Um, so you're not gonna be bringing cards close necessarily up. So a GoPro is, I think, acceptable in that case. And then, then what you wanna do is you want to have some sort of an overhead mount. Um, in my opinion, that's probably the best way uh, is to do a straight overhead mount. Um, and there's a few different types of overhead mounts that you can go and look at. There's a lot of them on Amazon, but usually those mounts, if they're super nice, they're crazy expensive or they're just kind of cheap. Um, that's not a terrible place to start though. I'll show you what I first started using. So my first overhead mount was something like this, right? You can see it clamps onto a desk of some sort. Um, it has little levers that lock things into place. As you can hear, sounds pretty janky, but it works, right? It locks things into place pretty well. Um, the only problem with this one is as you can see, it only has this one articulation point here. Everything else is sort of a fixed distance, height and, and out like that. So the problem with this one was in order to get it over where I needed, that would dictate where I have to place the mount on a desk. Um, like I said, it works, uh, but that's a stopgap in my opinion. Preferably what you would get would be, um, you know, my recommendation would be something like this. So this is the Elgato desk mount. Uh, it's the Elgato logo. Um, it is normally just like this first piece here up to here. And then it has additional parts like this and this and this, all of different sizes that you can basically clamp and unclamp together to customize the overhead mount basically. And the reason I like that specifically is one is much sturdier than the other one. Two, it gives you variable options for like, if you wanna mount something further or closer, um, if you need to change those distances. The camera that I have right now is on another desk mount, uh, but I don't have a bunch of those articulating arms because the camera just needs to be up to be high. It doesn't need to be out to one side or the other. Um, so I would recommend the Elgato. Again, I'll put a link to that stuff in the description, um, but that would be what I would recommend. It's a little bit pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but um, if you wanna do overhead shots, it's probably the best option right now given the price and, and what's actually available. And then, then for the deck profile, uh, what you're gonna do is you're going to record both your uh, GoPro footage for me and the camera footage of you talking at the same time in OBS. Now that would require you to have a computer that has the ability to use two capture cards. Um, there's a lot of details on that in terms of like, uh, I don't know if it's like bus memory basically. I don't know, there's some limit depending on the kind of computer you have. I have a crazy beefy rig, so I have the ability to use multiple capture cards at the same time. If you don't, you could simply record one of them locally, whether that's this one or that one, and then record the other one via OBS, and then just edit them together in your editing software. Um, but that would be the uh, perfect sort of recording setup. And then, now that we're getting past pack openings, is where I think it's important to talk about lighting. Um, lighting is a critical component to a variety of things, especially to cards. Um, as you probably know, if you overlight things, you get a lot of glare on cards. If you underlight things, everything looks grainy and not really that great. I can't really show you my lights because I'm using them right now, but I would recommend investing in some additional lighting beyond just whatever your overhead light is or a lamp. The very first thing that I got was this super cheap little articulating LED lamp thing. It's fine, it was like, I think 20 bucks, 30 bucks. It will provide additional light. That's really all you need. This light is a little harsher, uh, meaning if you put it directly on something, you're gonna get a lot of glare with cards and sleeves and things, but look, it works. Um, the other option, the other option, if you're willing to invest a decent amount more money um, is, again, Elgato has a key light. They have a key light mini now as well, which might be another option for you at a smaller price point, but uh, the key lights are really great. I use two of them, one on either side. 
They're pretty expensive. Um, I might put a picture here or something to show you what I'm referring to, uh, but I like them. They go really well with the mounts um, that Elgato has uh, and that allows you to adjust like what direction they're facing, etc. because you don't wanna face them directly at you or directly at the cards because that will cause glare. They're bright enough where you can bounce the light off of walls and things. And so actually what I'm gonna do here is now that we're talking about lighting and deck profiles and things, I'll just cut over to some footage of me showing you a trick that I do to make sure that the lighting isn't too harsh on my cards. And so I'm avoiding as much glare as possible. So uh, in terms of the uh, card trick, the lighting trick that I use, uh, I would say what you wanna do is you wanna take one of your shinier cards, weird flex, but okay. Take one of your shiny cards, uh, just put it down on the surface that you wanna record uh, that you're worried about the lighting. And then what I do is I just hold it there and then I just run it around the entire surface and then I get a sense of like where the glare might be coming from. So for this one, you can see like, okay, okay, it's good, it's good, it's good. Active Pokemon area starts to get a little glary and then wow, there's a huge amount of glare that goes basically, it's like basically this whole area here is just full of glare. So what I will do then is I'll say, okay, let's think about my lighting. I actually moved my lighting. As you can see, it's probably even harsher on my face. Um, but what I'll do then is I'll change my lighting to see if that changes the glare. So what I'm gonna do is make the lighting not as directly pointed at the playmat. So I moved the lighting. As you can tell, there is still decent amount of lighting on this playmat. Uh, you can still see the card. But if I do the same trick now, as you can see, there is still a small amount of glare right over here. But really that glare goes away and it's not nearly as harsh as it was before. Um, so that is the trick that I do um, to sort of minimize glare and understand where the areas of glare might be. And what you wanna do is, look, there might be a perfect lighting scenario where you get zero glare anywhere. That's amazing. Uh, I would say most at-home setups are not gonna be that good. Uh, what you'll end up with is minimizing the glare and putting it into a place on the playmat that's acceptable. Places that are acceptable in my mind, right here or right here. Basically to the right and left of the active Pokemon area is an acceptable area for the glare maybe over here as well in the prize card area. But the reason I say that is because you don't want glare on your bench, that's annoying. You don't want glare in the active Pokemon spot or anywhere around the active Pokemon where other cards like energy or tools might be. And I don't think you want glare um, here or here because that is where you're usually pulling from your deck. That is your discard here. This is where you're gonna see your hand. And uh, here is where you might place a card that you get from Jirachi. So, just some tips on um, how to avoid uh, glare with your lighting setup and like how I figure out where the glare is. All right, uh, beyond all that, you still have an external mic, uh, whether it's a USB or something fancy. Uh, you have your editing software, the music, etc. All of that is basically the same as the other stuff. It's really the overhead and the lighting that is the main difference, uh, as well as the potential type of camera you could use. Um, so now I'm gonna cut over to some footage that I took of me in that setup, just so you can see how I've arranged things that I've described here. So for this one, I have the playmat here, uh, which is where all the deck profile stuff goes. Then I have my GoPro as the overhead. Um, and I choose to use the GoPro just because it's a simpler setup little bit easier and I like to have a face cam that is still good quality for these specifically. Um, and the GoPro is attached to my computer. Uh, the top cord is the power and then the bottom is the HDMI, the micro HDMI out, which goes into my computer, um, which is uh, using the Elgato cam link. So that is one cam link that I use for this ca camera. And this all goes into OBS and is recorded live actually in OBS rather than uh, recorded after the fact. And then I have my microphone here. Um, obviously you don't need this type of microphone. Um, you could use a blue Yeti mic. I mean, there's a variety of different mics. This is just the mic that I choose to use. Um, and as you can see, I'm using the Elgato stand here to hold the camera, 
Blue makes a really good microphone stand if you have that kind of mic. And then I have my face cam set up here. I actually put it a little bit taller than normal. Um, so that way I can sort of stand back, do the deck profiles while standing. And then what you can see here actually for all of my videos, um, except for maybe like if I'm doing a Twitch stream, but anytime I have a video here, I always face this light and bounce the light off of the wall rather than turning it around and facing it directly down here. The reason being is I try to avoid glare. I think, and then you have the light over there, it's far enough away and it's not pointed directly at this. So that helps. So this next setup is going to be the IRL battle setup. The things that you see when you go to tournaments, um, not to that degree by any means, but when you see people playing with each other, uh, Tricky Jim's videos, Rare Candies, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, how do they get those shots? The basic way to do any of that stuff, and this is for all of these, uh, except for one, is little tripod thing. You could usually want something taller than this though. Smartphone and uh, some editing software. That's really all you technically need. If you were gonna do this with just a smartphone, I would actually recommend getting a slightly taller tripod than what I've shown you. That way it is elevated enough uh, to capture and, and far away enough to capture both play mats. Um, so I actually don't have a tripod type thing. I use a different setup, um, but that would be something I would recommend, getting a slightly taller tripod and then just a phone mount. And you can use that and that will technically work fine. Then you just edit it afterwards, etc. For an optimal setup though, um, you would also go and use, in terms of your cameras, smartphone or a GoPro. Um, you can use either one. Uh, I use the GoPro personally. I like to not always have my smartphone being taken up by that in case something's you know, a call or anything like that. Um, so I use a GoPro. Uh, again, you would also use an overhead mount, just like the ones that I showed you. Outside of the overhead mount, you have, uh, you know, you have your lighting, similar to what I was telling you before. You just adjust that to make sure you're not getting a lot of glare. Um, and then you would feed all of that in some degree into your recording software like OBS. Uh, you might record some stuff locally and then edit those things together in OBS. Um, and then I would re record a, uh, I would use the external microphone to probably record either live or post analysis. It's up to your style really at that point. Some people like to hear people talking as they play. Um, if that's the case, cool. Just plug in the microphone, record everything via OBS, uh, and then record that audio live. If you want to do it after the fact, you just have to go take that footage as you're watching it. You talk into a mic uh, and record that audio, and then you can edit that after the fact. That is basically it for the IRL battle. Uh, I will show you what my setup for that might look like. Um, I haven't done these in a while, so. But yeah, this is what my setup would look like for that. I actually use a separate table than my main table, so that might be something that you consider as well. Uh, you need a place for you and an opponent to sit uh, across from each other where you can also mount everything and then potentially run all of that into your computer for the optimal setup. It's a bit, it's a bit more. This is uh, asking a bit more in terms of space as well, but you see I have a table behind me so I can do that. So here is what that would look like in my setup. So as you can see here, I would clear an area, put a playmat down. I use the double playmats, but single playmats are fine too. Um, and then I mount a camera here uh, overhead. Um, I try to make it, I didn't really perfect it this time, but try to make it so you can get all the play mat in as best you can. Um, and then usually, I didn't do this for the purpose of this video, but this would then be running into the computer, the actual like cables, uh, so that I could record it directly via OBS versus having to export the footage from the GoPro. Um, and then again, I might have my camera set up to look at me, um, a microphone, etc., cetera, uh, or I'll just do post analysis. Uh, but yeah, that is just generally one way to do the setup. You could also do a tripod um, looking down. That's another way to do it, perfectly fine. And then finally, uh, finally we have the, the newest type of setup, I would say. It's the virtual IRL battle. So using physical real cards, but battling people uh, who are not with you personally, who are, you know, you're battling over the internet. Um, 
You've seen probably some of those videos if you've watched my channel before uh, with Celios. I did a video with uh, Kenny from Nightwatch Gaming and probably some other folks by the time this comes out. I do not have a minimum for this I because I think the setup is difficult. You need a lot of equipment and you need your opponent to also have a similar level of equipment in my mind. Optimal setup is uh, just think of this times two. You need all of this and your opponent needs all of this. Uh, you obviously need a PC or a Mac to start with um, because you are going to be using video chat application to see the other person's screen. That application, I personally prefer Discord. You could use Skype. You could really use anything, right? Uh, but Discord or Skype are probably the ones you wanna focus on for now. Um, so PC or Mac? video chat application as a starting point. Then what you want to do is use an overhead mount, uh, you know, like I was showing you earlier. You want to point that overhead mount down at your side of the table, so to speak, your play mat, your cards. And for that, I have actually had some issues using a GoPro with the overhead mount uh, in Discord. It might work for you. Uh, for whatever reason, I cannot get my Discord to recognize the GoPro via cam link as a, my, as a, as a camera. So I end up using my DSLR actually, which is an overkill, but I end up using my DSLR. You could use a webcam if you really needed to, uh, but you point that down at your playmat. I would say optimally you would have that DSLR, something that has the ability to record locally as well. So. You use that DSLR on the desk mount, pointed downwards, recording your end. Um, you would use the additional lighting, your microphone, etc. You use a recording software like OBS as well. And the way that this all works together, you video chat the other person, put that at full screen. And then in OBS, you are going to display capture or window capture um, the Discord application that is full screen of your opponent. So your opponent will see your mat, you will see theirs. That's how you play. And what you're doing is you're recording their side uh, and you are also recording your own side locally on the camera that you have as the overhead. Now, if you do that, you don't need your opponent to send you any footage. You just can go from there. But, um, you know, you might have a scenario where your opponent doesn't have all that set up or you don't for whatever reason. Um, and then what your opponent will do is the exact same thing. Record theirs via OBS, uh, their uh, dis Discord, and then they would also record locally their overhead. And if you want the highest quality footage, you would just share the overhead recording only. And so, let me focus this up. And so Discord would be um, just you being able to see things. And then you could edit together the footage that was recorded locally rather than the compressed audio uh, video footage from Discord. But that's not necessary. You could just use Discord for one half and your locally recorded footage for the other. Um, yeah. And what you do after that, you take those two video files, go into your editing application, Premiere Final Cut, and then you would like rotate them, crop them, put them next to each other on that 16 by 9 canvas in that editing software. Uh, and what I do, I think this makes the most sense, put them together. I... Um, export that video alone and then I record myself with that face cam watching the video I just exported and commentating. So I do post analysis um, and then I take the videos that I have over here and the post analysis now that I have sync all of that and edit that and output that and that's the final video that you see. Um, this is a lot more work. It's a lot more work for you. It requires a lot of the person you wanna play with and record with. Um, it's probably the most difficult because you have to rely on you know other people's setups too. And if at any point along that line, somebody's camera doesn't work or microphone or whatever, it can be difficult. Um, but I'm now gonna cut over to just what I physically would do. It looks a lot like the deck profile, but I'll just show you what that looks like uh, so you can see. And uh, then we'll, we'll wrap this up. So. As you can see here, um, for the online battles that I've been doing lately, uh, the setup can be a little bit more complicated. I'm actually using my DSLR as the main camera 
to record my side of the battle. Um, and then what I do afterwards is I then take this camera, set it back up over here somewhere, record myself watching back the full video footage that I then, I actually edit the footage together so that I can watch it back simultaneously, like both sides, record myself thinking about it and then edit that on top of that. So. Uh, that is going to be the four different ways of recording Poketuber type things. Um, hopefully you were able to follow along. Uh, hopefully, uh, this all made sense. I have links to stuff, um, in the description in terms of like uh, equipment. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions about stuff. It can be confusing. All of this takes time. And to be frank, all of this takes some amount of, of, of monetary investment too. So um, yeah, I understand that not everybody can afford to do that, uh, which is why I wanted to tell you that, yeah, you can do things minimally for most of these if you want. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will catch you all in a future video. Carpe awesome.